Most modern commercial vehicles are in many ways pretty car-like these days, but what about a really large one? This second generation Vauxhall Movano design predates the period where LCV engineering became more sophisticated, but in 2019 it was brought up to date with quite a few of the welcome tech touches that you'll find on more expensive competitors in the segment for really big vans. If size really matters, then you need a van that's really big, and this one is. But Vauxhall's second generation Movano has more than just sheer size on its side, especially in the revised form we're testing here. This updated version was launched in late 2019 and has been equipped to take on the biggest guns in the large panel van class. Vauxhall has a long history of producing vans that British businesses like, one dating all the way back to 1931, uh, though back then the brand's LCVs carried Bedford badges. Since that time, through the HA and CA models that sold in their thousands right to today's Combo and Vivaro vans, the Luton brand has continued to be a major player in the commercial vehicle market. In the early part of this century, that was accomplished through a product sharing agreement with the Renault-Nissan Alliance that bought us both the first generation Movano A version of this model, launched in 1998 and usefully updated in 2003, and the original version of this subsequent Mark II Movano B design, first introduced in 2010. Following the acquisition of the Opel and Vauxhall brands from General Motors in 2017 by the French PSA Group, all future Vauxhall vans will be based on Peugeots and Citroëns. Indeed, the Luton makers' smaller Combo and Vivaro vans already are. But not the Movano. Not yet, anyway. PSA wants to wait until new generation versions of its Peugeot Boxer and Citroen Relay large van models are launched before switching Vauxhall's largest van onto French underpinnings. So for a short final period, this Movano design continues to mirror that of a Renault Master and a Nissan MV400. Those last two LCVs have recently been updated, so this Vauxhall can be two, which in this case means a light facelift, fresh safety and infotainment equipment, and some updates to the 2.3 litre diesel engine range, which have improved running cost efficiency and extended the service intervals. As before, there's front, rear, and all-wheel drive drivetrain options, plus a vast range of body style, payload, and low capacity choices. But will it all be enough to allow this Vauxhall to continue to keep pace with more modern large van designs like the Mercedes Sprinter, the Volkswagen Crafter, and the latest version of the two-ton Ford Transit? Let's find out. Let's start with the headlines here. Yes, the engine range still uses the same Renault-Nissan Alliance source 2.3 litre diesel engine. No, it's not quite the same. Or mostly it isn't anyway. If you happen to need a Movano with rear wheel drive, then the old versions of this unit, which developed uh, 130, 145 and 165 PS will still appear beneath the bonnet. The front-driven Movanos that most customers choose, though, have switched over to a new version of this 2.3-litre Turbo D unit that has been light-duty homologated, and it's quite a lot different. All versions of it use twin turbos and all feature a new cylinder head, a new cylinder block, an improved variable turbo with an integrated exhaust manifold and a standard, the brand's Ecoflex stop-start system. As a result, all the units on offer are usefully more efficient. Uh, we'll get to that in our practicality and costs section, even though all are also more powerful. Again, there are three different power outputs, but this time round they're rated at 135, 150 and 180 PS. The 180 PS variant is available with the option of the brand's semi-auto manual automated tech shift six-speed clutchless transmission. For this test, we've opted for the volume 150 PS engine, a manual gearbox and front-wheel drive, the kind of combination most likely buyers will want. Provided you don't press the Facia Eco button, which restricts pulling power quite a lot, you'll find that this Turbo D Blue Injection unit has a gutsy feel. 
Vauxhall says that between 20 to 40 newton metres of pulling power has been added across the powertrain lineup, and this 150 PS model certainly pulls strongly, developing all of its 385 newton metres of torque from just 1750 RPM. So you won't find yourself needing to row this van along with the gear lever. If you regularly engage in lugging heavier loads, though, you'll prefer one of the rear-wheel drive models, particularly if you tow. Some of the bigger rear-driven Mavanas have a brake towing weight of three tonnes. That's half a tonne more than any front-driven model. Vauxhall also approves an all-wheel drive conversion carried out by German specialist company Oberanger, but much of the traction you'd get from that kind of drivetrain can be delivered by a correctly specified rear-driven model equipped with the optional limited slip differential. With this fitted, if one wheel starts to spin on a slippery surface, torque is diverted to a wheel with more grip. For most operators, though, the most hazardous driving conditions they'll come across will be of the urban traffic jam sort, which seems to have been the kind of environment this Vauxhall van has been primarily designed for. The light steering, which is welcome when you're trying to thread this large vehicle through tight city streets, certainly gives you that feeling right from the off. As does the relatively tight turning circle, 13.6 uh, metres curb to curb or 14.1 metres wall to wall on a typical front or rear driven L2 variant like this, which isn't bad for such an enormous LCV. With either drive format, uh, parking and low speed street manoeuvring are easier than you might expect they would be with a vehicle this size. That's thanks not only to the large door mirrors but also to the further wide angle mirror on the inside of the passenger sun visor that allows the driver to see if anything or any one, a cyclist for instance, is in the vehicle's near side blind spot. As an owner, you can build further on that thanks to the fact that for the first time in this revised form, this Movano can also be ordered with an optional rear view camera. Well, two cameras, in fact. Uh, one can appear on this central infotainment screen. The other, uh, Vauxhall calls it a surround rear vision option, is permanently on, uh, works like a rear view mirror and sits where a rear view mirror would normally be. Vauxhall hasn't made any transmission or suspension changes here, so as before, the gear shift isn't the smoothest in the segment and the ride can become a bit unsettled over country routes and some porous street side surfaces. The things do smooth out a bit on the highway, particularly if you've got a bit of weight in the back. Uh, in our original test of this van, uh, we referenced the fact that refinement at cruising speeds wasn't a strong point of this model, and it still isn't. More modern rival designs set a much higher standard here. The engine's not that noisy, but wind noise and tyre roar are both quite evident. We're pleased by the inclusion of a side wind assistant on all models, though, designed to prevent this van being blown off course in highway crosswinds. Lane departure warning and side blind spot alert can now be optionally added in. Uh, but the kind of autonomous braking system fitted both to many rivals and also found in the brand's mid-size Vivaro van is notable by its absence. Still, the disc brakes have a pleasingly positive feel. This improved Movano gains a family face that brings it more into line with other LCVs in Vauxhall's portfolio. Chromed wings have been added to the large front grille, either side of an even larger Griffin badge, and they flow outwards into the daytime running lights now incorporated within the large vertical headlamps. Otherwise, the look is as before, with a distinct central bonnet crease, the option of these low-set circular fog lights, and just above them on all models, these neat corner cutouts upon which you could briefly place a foot were it ever necessary to reach up and clean the screen. In profile, you realise just what a vast contender this Vauxhall can be, with four body lengths delivering carriage capacity that can be anywhere between 8 and 17 cubic metres. Here we've got a typical mid-range L2 model. Whichever Movano variant you select, the wheels are 16 inches in size, but you have to pay extra for their full diameter plastic covers, which seems a bit mean. 
all models get this wide lower side rubbing strip and this downward angled cab window that provides a better view of this big wide angled door mirror. Not much has changed at the rear, which is a little disappointing since we'd like to have seen this high level stoplight actually positioned at a high level rather than just above the door handle. Other rivals cite the tail lamps a little higher too to better keep them out of harm's way. Here's something new though, this optional surround vision overhead camera which projects images through to a screen at the top of the windscreen which works like a rear view mirror. There continue to be three roof height choices, with most likely to want the normal H2 roof height that we've got here, which can give you a low box height of up to 1,894 millimetres in a front driven variant, eight millimetres more than an equivalent Ford Transit. If that's not sufficient, the alternative and tallest H3 roof height can increase that to as much as 2,144 millimetres in a front driven model, which is 19 millimetres more than an equivalent Ford Transit. Time to look inside the cab. Now, it's quite a climb into the driver's seat. But once there, you get the kind of satisfyingly commanding view of the road ahead that you'd want from a large segment LCV of this type. Back in 2010, when this Movano B design was first launched, this cabin layout felt quite car-like, but things have moved on in van design since, as you'll discover if you try a competitor from Volkswagen, Mercedes or even Ford in this segment. Still, some efforts have been made to bring things a little more up to date. The steering wheel has been redesigned, as has the instrument binnacle that you view through it with its smarter 3.5 inch TFT display, which can show temperature, a digital speedo, average speed, distance travelled, driving range, current and average fuel consumption and an odometer. You'll notice other changes too if you're a Movano regular. The gear knob has been restyled, there are silver bezels for the climate control dials and perhaps most significantly there's now the opportunity to build in this optional multimedia Navi Pro infotainment system with its 7 inch centre dash screen. If you paid extra for a rear view camera its image will also appear on this display. Earlier we mentioned the optional surround rear vision overhead camera. Well, its image appears separately on this extra overhead screen positioned where the rear view mirror would normally be. That feed is always on, but if you find it slightly distracting, as on this test we sometimes have, you can turn this screen towards the passenger until you really need it. As a further option, you can also specify a wireless charging mat. Everything's fashioned from dour grey plastic that looks pretty hard wearing and generally the ergonomic design here is well thought out, though there are a couple of issues. The raised gear stick is positioned a fraction further away than you'd ideally want and disappointingly the steering wheel adjusts only for height and not for reach. On the plus side though, uh, we really like this wide angle mirror on the inside of the passenger sun visor that helps you keep a better eye on your offside blind spot. And throughout this test we've found the driver's seat to be very comfortable. Even the standard chair is six way adjustable but here it benefits from the upgrade to comfort seat spec that we'd recommend which gets you lumbar support, an adjustable padded head restraint and an integral armrest. If you regularly deliver over bumpy surfaces, you might also want to look at the optional air cushion driver's seat. Unless you pay extra to get two separate front seats, your Movano will come with this two passenger front bench, which is kind of arrangement that usually on an LCV means a rather cramped perch for the occupant relegated into the middle. Here, the centre space on offer isn't too bad, though knee room is slightly compromised by this storage area in the centre console with its indented cup holder and 12 volt socket. Ah yes, storage. We should talk about that. There's plenty of it in this cab. Vauxhall claims that no fewer than 22 separate compartments are provided, which together offer around 55 litres of space. And that's before you add in the extra 60 litres of space that you'll get under the two passenger seats, provided you've ordered the optional convenience pack that we've got fitted here. 
It's a little disappointing that many of the receptacles leave anything placed inside in full view of prying eyes, but at least all the usual cubbies are decently sized. These two large overhead shelves, for instance, and these big door bins, which incorporate a small upper compartment and a lower section with a recessed moulding big enough to take a flask or a large two-litre bottle of water. It's a pity that the spacious 11 litre glove box can't be locked, but it can be chilled. And there's a useful option of an A4 clipboard that folds out of the dash for holding invoices, maps or delivery notes. A small lower compartment features at either end of the fascia. There's a ticket flap on the driver's sun visor. And you also get three shelves on top of the dashboard, which has further cup holders at either end. Two more drink holders feature in this optional desktop surface that folds out of the centre backrest and swivels towards the driver, which incorporates a tray and a small compartment and is aimed at those wanting to use this vehicle as a mobile office. The various provided connectivity ports will help here. There's a USB, a 12 volt and an aux in socket. But if you're really going to function on the move, you'll probably need to invest in the Multimedia Navi Pro infotainment system upgrade that we mentioned earlier. This display has nothing like the sophistication or screen clarity of competitor infotainment setups, but it does incorporate most of the things that you'd ideally want in its radio, media, phone, map and nav functions. As part of these, you get Wi-Fi enabled connected navigation and Apple CarPlay, Android Auto smartphone mirroring so that you can replicate key phone apps onto the seven inch center dash display. Let's start with what you'll pay. With around 120 derivatives from which to choose, giving you a quick summary on Movano pricing is pretty difficult. Still, we'll try. From the launch of this revised model in late 2019, the smallest L1H1 panel van version of this vehicle was priced from just under £29,000. That's excluding the dreaded VAT. But it's more likely that you'll be paying somewhere in the £30,000 to £40,000 XVAT bracket for this LCV. Buyers choose between four exterior lengths from 5.05 to 6.85 metres, that's L1 to L4, and three roof heights of 1.7 to 2.14 metres, that's H1, H2 and H3. Most operators will probably want a variant like the one we have here, an L2 H2 model with a few well-chosen extras, which would cost around £35,000 excluding VAT. And that's probably fairly typical in terms of the kind of list pricing you'd be looking at. For panel van customers wanting to add extra people carrying capacity to the packaging mix, there are the double cab and crew cab variants with their extra rearward seats in front of the load bay. Or if you want to give the whole space over to the carriage of people, there's a 17 seat minibus Movano variant based around the L3 H2 body shape. We're not taking it for granted, of course, that you'll want a panel van or people carrying variant of some sort. Vauxhall also does quite a bit of business with chassis cab, crew cab, platform cab, tipper, drop side and box van versions of this model. Then there are the ambulances, uh, cherry pickers, horse boxes and many other options offered by Vauxhall approved coach builders who enjoy great scope for conversion with this vehicle. Many of these specialist variants will be based around rear-driven Movano mechanicals, which means the need to use the older, heavy-duty homologated version of this van's 2.3-litre Turbo D bi-turbo diesel engine. That will mean that you'll be restricted to the three outputs that applied to the older version of this power plant, 130 PS, 145 PS and 165 PS. All the front-driven panel vans and their people carrying derivatives, though, come with the updated light-duty homologated powertrain lineup introduced with this revised model, which offers a choice between 135 PS, 150 PS, and 180 PS. For an extra £875, the top 180 PS unit can be ordered with the brand's semi-automatic tech shift gearbox, which does away with the clutch pedal and will be preferred by urban users. Okay, let's drill down into the lineup a little. 
The smallest versions of this model can only be had in front-driven form, where you get all three roof height options and the first three body lengths. Those needing to tow or take heavier loads might be better off looking at the rear-wheel drive option, though there's a bit less choice if you want that. Rear-driven Movanos are available with L3 and L4 body lengths and H2 and H3 roof heights. Should you want a double cab model with that extra row of seats behind the front ones, you'll choose between an L2 H2 front driven model or an L3 H2 rear driven version. Here though, our main focus is to serve those looking for straightforward Movano panel vans. So, how have they been pitched in comparison to direct segment rivals? Let's see. As expected, this Vauxhall is much more affordably priced than this segment's two highest quality options, the Mercedes Sprinter and the Volkswagen Crafter. Uh, the latter also on sale in rebadged form as the MAN TGE. But the Griffin brand's list pricing doesn't give this LCV much of an advantage over the other volume players in the class, the two most obvious ones being the pair of vans that share all of this Vauxhall's basic engineering, the Renault Master and the Nissan NV400. The other badge-engineered design in this segment is the one marketed as either a Peugeot Boxer, a Citroen Relay or a Fiat Ducato. If you really want to save money on a van of this kind, there's also the Maxus Deliver 9. All of these contenders take on two key standalone models, the Iveco Daily and perhaps most significantly the UK market leader, the two-ton version of Ford's Transit. Now, it's likely that your Vauxhall dealer will be able to match or beat pricing on any of the mainstream competitors just mentioned, and the Griffin brand can offer a wider support network than any brand bar Ford in this sector. All of which could make uh, this Movano a very creditable choice if the right deal is on the table. If that's the case, there'll be quite a few decisions to make before placing your order. So, if your notebook's at the ready, let's try and talk you through a few of them. We've already talked about the four different body lengths and the three roof heights. Well, equally important is the gross vehicle weight you're going to need in your chosen Movano model. Let's assume that you want a panel van like this one. The entry-level version has a gross vehicle weight of 2,800 kilograms. The next option is 3,300 kilograms, which slots in below the two top gross vehicle weights, 3,500 kilograms, which is what we have here, and 4,500 kilograms, though those 4.5 ton versions are so large that you may need to pay extra for a tachograph. Bear in mind that the longest L4 wheelbase is only available with the two weightiest options. At this point, you should have a pretty good idea of what your ideal Movano derivative is going to be. It's now just a case of finalising your vehicle's final equipment spec. Now, there's only one trim level on offer, Addition, and it covers off all the usual basics. Uh, a three-person front seat, powered windows, heated powered mirrors, uh, rain-sensitive wipers, plus, of course, a full-height bulkhead and a near-side sliding side door. In addition, you get a wide-angle mirror on the inside of the passenger sun visor that helps you keep a better eye on your offside blind spot. And there's a DAB tuner, a CD MP3 player, a USB port and Bluetooth, plus a range of safety features that we'll talk you through in a few minutes. Unfortunately, you have to pay extra for a security alarm. The air conditioning option costs more too, though it does include a chilled glove box. On to options, and as with any van, there are plenty, depending on the uses that you have in mind. Now, we'd start by making sure that our Movano was specified with the optional convenience pack, which for just over 500 quid more, gets you most of the extra cab stuff that you would ideally want in this LCV, specifically the swivelling work tray that folds out from the centre passenger seat, um, a retractable A4 fascia document clip, under seat storage, extra bulkhead soundproofing, a one touch down function for the driver's power window and a more supportive comfort driver's seat which comes with lumbar adjustment, a height adjustable padded head restraint and an armrest. That latter feature can also be ordered separately. 
If you're going to be using your Movano as a mobile office, we'd suggest that you consider the Multimedia Navi Pro Infotainment Upgrade Package, a further extra fitted to this test van. This gets you a 7-inch center dash screen via which you can access Wi-Fi enabled connected navigation with 3D street level mapping and a better quality four-speaker DAB audio system. Plus, there's Apple CarPlay, Android Auto smartphone mirroring. A wireless charging mat is also optional. Another key option is the 270 degree opening feature for the twin rear doors which will enable them to be folded right back into the sides of the vehicle when you're unloading. And talking of unloading, it would be wise to protect the cargo area with one of Vauxhall's load lining options. There's full height plywood load lining and plywood wheel arch protection. Plus, we'd also want the optional resin coated plywood load floor covering. Staying with practicalities, there's no option for the kind of powered sliding side door that you can have on the brand's smaller Vivaro model, but you can of course specify a second sliding side door on the offside. An optional glazed pack adds in extra glass areas around this van, but you might well prefer to specify any required glazed areas specifically. Fixed or sliding windows can be added into either sliding side door if you wish. You can add a window into the cab bulkhead and the rear doors can be glazed too and if so can feature protection grills. On front driven models you can uh, add in an integral step to the rear bumper. It's standard on rear driven variants. Front and rear mud flaps are optional as are splash guards. Those wanting to carry stuff on the roof will want to look at roof bars, roof racks and a roof carrier ladder. What about driving stuff? Well, there's a lot more optional camera tech available on a Bavano these days. A rear view camera that appears on the infotainment screen and or the pricey surround rear vision package we've been trying here, which provides an always on feed to a display positioned at the top of the windscreen that acts like a virtual rear view mirror. Once you've used it, you'll wonder how you lived without it. More conventionally, you can of course order front and rear parking sensors if you want them and manoeuvring would also be aided by the optional long arm extendable door mirrors. Um, cruise control is as usual an option and some operators might want a factory installed speed limiter which can be set to 56 miles an hour, 62 miles an hour or 68 miles an hour. The smart digital tachograph that's standard on the biggest rear-driven 4.5 tonne models can be optioned in further down the range too. We'd also want to add in the larger 105 litre fuel tank and possibly also a tow bar which, if fitted, will come with a trailer stability program to prevent towing sway. There's also an optional lighting pack that adds auto headlights to the rain sensitive wipers and also includes front fog lamps, static cornering lights and door to door illumination. Additionally, you can specify grippier all season tyres and talking of extra traction, rear driven models can be ordered with an optional locking rear differential, an ideal fitment if you'll frequently be delivering to slippery services like building sites. On to aesthetics. Refreshingly, Vauxhall's prepared to offer a range of solid colours that don't cost extra. But you can pay more for one of the two available brilliant shades. Mandarin orange or, as here, poppy red. Pricier two-coat metallic finishes in silver, blue or black are also available. These full diameter wheel covers also cost extra. Moving inside, you can specify floor mats and harder wearing vinyl upholstery. And if you really don't want the two person front passenger bench, you can replace it with a single seat. Finally, let's cover safety. Now we're always disappointed on vans to find just a single driver's airbag fitted as standard. That's again the case here. A passenger bag is only optional. And it's disappointing that Vauxhall doesn't offer uh, either autonomous braking or an SOS assistance system. That's the kind of setup that would alert the emergency services to your crash location if the airbags went off. 
As for the more common safety inclusions that you do get, well, let's run down the standard tally. As usual, there's ABS braking with electronic brake force distribution to make it more effective and emergency brake assist that helps in panic stops advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning flashes. Other standard electronic assistance features include ESP stability control, hill start assist and traction control. A side wind assist system has been added to this improved model too. If you want to go further, there's the option of an advanced safety pack that adds in the extra camera safety features that Vauxhall has made available as part of this model upgrade. Specifically, high beam headlight assist, which automatically dips your main beam at night. Uh, lane departure warning, which alerts you if you drift out of your lane on the highway. And uh, side blind spot alert, which alerts you if you're about to dangerously pull out into the path of another vehicle. If your notebooks are at the ready, in this section, we're going to give you the loading and practicality stats and the efficiency stats that you're going to want to consider in choosing your ideal Movano model. Now, we've given you the key facts on the model lineup elsewhere in this film. Four body lengths, L1 at 2,583 millimetres in total length, this L2 version at 3,083 millimetres, the L3 variant at 3,733 millimetres, and the lengthiest L4 at 4,383 millimetres. And three roof heights, H1 1700 millimetres, this H2 variant which is 1798 millimetres high in rear driven form or 1894 millimetres high in this front driven guise and top H3 which is 2048 millimetres high in rear driven form or 2144 millimetres high in front driven guise. So, using this typical L2H2 variant as an example, let's start as usual at the business end, here at the rear. The main access is through these side hinged twin rear doors, and they open out first to 90 degrees, then via these black stays to 180 degrees. And then optionally, they can be uh, open right out to 270 degrees, so that they can fold back along the sides of the vehicle. The load sill height is a minimum 562 millimetres on this L2 model. It's five millimetres lower with the L3 body style. Bear in mind that the floor height rises quite a lot if you opt for a rear driven model up to around 700 millimetres. The height of this door aperture is 1,820 millimetres on this H2 model or 1,627 millimetres on an H1, while the overall width of the door opening measures in at 1,577 millimetres either way. As an alternative, of course, you might choose to enter the cargo area through the side door. This near side one is standard, an off side one can be fitted at extra cost. Now, there's no optional power operation for this door of the kind that you can have on the smaller Vivaro LCB, but its aperture is decently sized. It's 1,050 millimetres with an L1 model, or as in this case, 1,270 millimetres in width with an L2 or an L3 model, which is wide enough to allow Euro pallets to be loaded in sideways. The aperture height is 1,581 millimetres with an L1 or 1,780 millimetres with an L2 or an L3 model. Time to look at this cargo area in a little more detail. The capacity options here can of course be wide ranging with so many body style and roof choices on offer. Anything from 7.8 cubic metres and 2,583 millimetres of load space length in the base L1H1 variant right up to 17 cubic metres and 4,383 millimetres of load space length in the very biggest L4H3 model which can swallow up to four Euro pallets. Here, as mentioned earlier, we've got the mid-range L2H2 body shape that many Movano customers choose, which offers a 10.8 cubic metre load capacity and 3,083 millimetres of floor length. 
or models feature a load area width of 1,765 millimetres, which narrows to 1,380 millimetres between the wheel arches. The interior load area height is 1,700 millimetres on a low roof H1, but thereafter with the two higher H2 and H3 roof heights will, as with the outside dimensions, vary with your choice of drive format. This H2 interior roof height is 1,894 millimetres with this front driven model, but would be 1,798 millimetres with a rear driven variant. And with the top H3 roof version, you'd be looking at an interior loading height of 2,144 millimetres with a front driven model, or 2,048 millimetres with a rear driven variant. Talking of space for bulky things, you'll need to know about payloads, which can be as much as 2,100 kilograms, but which of course will vary according to your choice of variant. This typical L2H2 model can take up to 1,529 kilograms. As usual, the key payload determiner will be your selection between the four GVW gross vehicle weight options offered to Movano operators, 2.8, 3.3, 3.5 or 4.5 tonnes. The first three options are available with the L1 short wheelbase version, but with this mid-range L2, you'll be restricted to either 3.3 tonnes or, as in this case, 3.5 tonnes. As you'd expect, the longest L3 and L4 models are only available with the top 3.5 and 4.5 GVW weights. For all buyers, it would have been helpful if Vauxhall had been able to offer the overload indicator that you can have on the smaller combo cargo van, a digital readout in the cargo bay showing if you've exceeded your permitted payload. Unfortunately, there are at present no plans to offer this feature here. Pity. Your choice of engine and body style will, of course, also influence payload capacity, as will your drivetrain selection. Now, most will want this LCV in either front-driven or rear-driven form, and for really heavy industrial use, there's also a twin rear-wheel drive option, uh, which increases towing capacity to 3 tonnes. Uh, the standard figure is 2.5 tonnes. This is certainly a very usable workspace. Grab handles aid both side and rear access, and the area is well illuminated. We've counted no fewer than 14 tie-down points, including three on each of the rear door pillars. The cargo sidewalls and the doors, as you can see, are protected from scrapes and scratches to half their height by hardboard panels. But there's no standard protection for either the floor or the wheel boxes would suggest that you might seriously consider the optional ply lining kit and the extra cost heavy duty resin floor covering. Uh, the bulkhead features a handy built in upper shelf which would be a useful place to store things like uh, tie straps but unfortunately it can't be had with the kind of openable flap that you can have on the smaller Vivaro van which allows you to push longer items through into the cab. So, we've established that this Movano is a very practical proposition, but what about its running costs, claimed by Vauxhall to be very difficult to beat in this class? Well, if you've watched our driving experience section, you'll know that significant changes have been made to this LCV's 2.3 litre diesel by turbo engine in the light duty homologated Euro 60 temp form that's fitted to all front driven variants. These updates mostly aimed at improving efficiency. Things like a fuel pressure raise from 1800 to 2500 bar and a redesign for the cylinder head, cylinder block and the variable turbo. As a result, the base 135 PS unit's headline NEDC rated CO2 figure is enhanced from 201 grams per kilometre to 177 grams per kilometre. That's an improvement of 12%. And its headline WLTP rated combined cycle economy reading is up from 36.7 miles per gallon to 42.1 miles per gallon. That's an improvement of 15%. 
the more powerful mid-range 150 PS power plant that we're trying here is actually more frugal than the base unit. Plus, its gains following the engine update are slightly bigger. The headline NEDC rated CO2 figure is enhanced from 179 grams per kilometre uh, to 154 grams per kilometre. That's an improvement of 14%. And its headline WLTP rated combined cycle economy reading is up from 40.9 miles to the gallon to 48.0 miles to the gallon. That's an improvement of 17%. Now, all the fuel figures just quoted assume use of the provided eco button, which, when pressed, restricts torque, acceleration and various other functions and is supposed to improve frugality by up to 10%. So how much of a difference might all this make to your overall spend in running this fan? Well, Vauxhall reckons quite a lot. Over a typical four-year, 80,000-mile ownership period, the base 135 PS power plant's running cost saving over the previous 130 PS unit with an L1H1 version of this fan could amount to £430, or as much as £480, if you were to choose the L3H3 body shape. With this test model's 150 PS engine, the saving over the same period compared to the 145 PS engine being replaced would be £226 with an L1H1 model or £303 with an L3H3 variant. For the top 180 PS engine in an L3H2, the saving over the same period would be £327 compared to the old 170 PS unit. Across the Mavana range, Vauxhall has now standardised the Ecoflex stop and start system that will cut the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Plus, as with all modern diesel engines, these Turbo D units use AdBlue, a urea-based solution that's injected into the exhaust gases to clean up emissions. This liquid is stored in a tank that you'll need to get topped up as part of regular servicing. Talking of tanks, uh, we'd suggest that you consider paying the small extra amount that would be necessary to upgrade the standard 80 litre fuel tank to one that's 105 litres in size. Anything else you should know? Well, at the time of this updated Mavana model's introduction in late 2019, Vauxhall wasn't offering this model with the full electric ZE battery powertrain that you can have on its Renault Master design stablemate. But all the technology's there, so that situation might quickly change. Now, whatever version of the Mavana you choose, uh, residual values will, of course, be crucial to whole life running costs. This Vauxhall can't, of course, match class-leading Volkswagen and Mercedes models in this regard, but depreciation levels are fairly close to what you could expect from most other volume brand competitors in this segment. Independent experts reckon that after three years and 36,000 miles, this van would have a residual value of 24%. That's based on VAT at 24%. As for insurance groups, well, they're typically rated at either Group 49A or Group 50A. Other things that you'll need to know include the fact that service intervals have been extended as part of the changes made to this model. Your Movano will need a scheduled service halt once every two years or 25,000 miles, whichever comes first. If you want to ensure the cost of these stops doesn't come as a surprise, there are prepaid servicing plans available that allow you to budget in advance for these regular checks. We should talk a little more about service and maintenance because there lies one of this Movano model's strongest selling points. At the time of this test, in early 2020, Vauxhall had 57 specialist LCV business centres nationwide and all dealerships offer a dedicated commercial vehicle sales team, B2B leasing solutions and overnight servicing, provided you drop your Movano off before 5pm in the afternoon. There's menu pricing for all work and body repair facilities, plus there's appointment-free servicing for diagnosis work, and minor stuff can be done while you wait and use the complimentary Wi-Fi. The centres also give you courtesy vehicles or local drop-offs, uh, a free vehicle health check with every workshop visit, and a free wash and vacuum after every service. Earlier, we mentioned the need to top up the AdBlue additive on the diesel engines. Well, that's an included part of the dealer service too. 
All of this stuff's important to a hassle-free ownership experience. Otherwise, things are much as you would expect. Uh, Vauxhall includes a three-year, 60,000-mile warranty, which is an unremarkable package, but it can be extended up to five years and 100,000 miles at extra cost. A year's free breakdown cover comes as standard, along with a six-year anti-corrosion guarantee. So there's life in the Movano yet. It certainly isn't the most sophisticated large van that you could choose, but we have a feeling that the things it lacks may not be of overriding importance for many business buyers. These people prioritise space, efficiency and sensible pricing, and they'll value the support of the kind of huge dealer support network that Vauxhall can offer. As for the changes made here, well, they can't mask the fact that the basic design of this LCV is well over a decade old. But the improvement package is quite well judged, giving the Movano a significantly more up-to-date feel in terms of its infotainment and safety provision. Plus, the servicing interval increase will be well received by operators. Otherwise, uh, things are much as they were. Amongst this vehicle's large van rivals, few others can offer quite such a wide range of body style, conversion or low capacity options. But of course you could say much the same of this van's Renault Master and Nissan MV400 LCV clones. Whether you'd want a Movano rather than one of those models will likely come down to the deal that you're offered and the proximity of your local dealer. That fact hasn't altered much, but this Movano's competitiveness in comparison to the class leaders in the large LCV segment has. It still needs to be significantly more affordable to be a preferential pick over a crafter, a sprinter or even a big transit, but it might very well be. And if it is, you might just be looking at the most sensible choice in the class right here. <laughs>